In this video, we will derive the area of a circle using integration and the equation of a circle x squared plus y squared equals r squared. To begin, here's the graph of the circle centered at the origin with the radius of r. Let's use the symmetry of the circle on the coordinate plane when integrating. For example, let's determine the area in the first quadrant, which is one-fourth of the circle. And if we multiply this area by four, we will have the total area of the circle. Let's decide to integrate with respect to x, and therefore, we will need to solve the equation x squared plus y squared equals r squared for y, so that we have y as a function of x. So beginning with the equation x squared plus y squared equals r squared, let's subtract x squared on both sides, which gives us y squared equals r squared minus x squared. And now to solve for y, we take the square root of both sides of the equation. But when doing this, we will have a plus or minus on the right. Simplifying, we have y equals plus or minus the square root of the quantity r squared minus x squared, where the positive square root gives the top of the circle, and the negative square root gives the bottom of the circle. But because we are using the symmetry and going to determine the area in the first quadrant and then multiply by four, we will use the function y equals the positive square root of the quantity r squared minus x squared. And therefore, when we set up the integral, notice how the integrand function is the square root of the quantity r squared minus x squared. And then we have dx because we're integrating with respect to x along the x-axis. The limits of integration are going to be from zero to r because the radius of the circle is r. And then again, we are multiplying by four because the integral gives us the area in the first quadrant, or one-fourth of the area, multiplying by four, gives us the area of the entire circle. And now to evaluate the integral, we'll perform a change of variables, where we let x equal r sine theta, and therefore differential x, or dx, equals r cosine theta d theta. Remember, dx is equal to the derivative of r sine theta with respect to theta times d theta. Performing the substitution gives us a equals four times the integral. Now these limits of integration are for x. We will need to determine new limits of integration in terms of theta after performing the substitution. Performing the substitution, we have the square root of r squared minus x squared is going to be the square of r sine theta, which gives us r squared sine squared theta and then dx equals r cosine theta d theta. And now because we're integrating with respect to theta, our limits of integration must be in terms of theta. And because we're integrating in the first quadrant, theta is going to be from zero radians to the positive y-axis, which is pi over two radians. So now the limits of integration are from zero to pi over two. We could also determine the limits of integration by substituting zero for x in this equation and solving for theta to determine the lower limit of integration. Then to determine the upper limit of integration, we could substitute r for x and again solve for theta. For the next step, let's factor r squared minus r squared sine squared theta by factoring out r squared. This gives us the square root of r squared times the quantity one minus sine squared theta, and we still have r cosine theta d theta. And now using the identity sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals one, if we subtract sine squared theta on both sides, we have one minus sine squared theta equals cosine squared theta. So let's substitute cosine squared theta here, and the square root of r squared is equal to r, and because we have another factor of r here, we are going to have an r squared outside the square root. So this is equal to four times the integral from zero to pi over two. Uh, let's show some extra work here. We have r from the square root of r squared, and then we still have the square root of one minus sine squared theta is equal to cosine squared theta, and then we still have r cosine theta d theta. Well, r times r is equal to r squared, and the square root of cosine squared is equal to one factor of cosine times this factor of cosine theta, which gives us cosine squared theta. So this gives us four 
times the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of r squared cosine squared theta d theta. Let's continue on the next slide. So the next step, let's perform a substitution for cosine squared theta. Looking at the identities here below, cosine squared theta equals 1 half times the quantity 1 plus cosine 2 theta. And we can also factor out r squared because we are integrating with respect to theta, not r. So now we have the area is equal to 4 r squared times the integral from 0 to pi over 2. And then again, we're performing a substitution for cosine squared theta, which again is equal to 1 half times the quantity 1 plus cosine 2 theta. Let's factor out the 1 half so we can divide this by 2. The integrand function is now 1 plus cosine 2 theta. And now let's break this up into two separate integrals because to integrate cosine 2 theta, we will need to perform u substitution. Of course, we can also simplify 4r squared divided by 2, which is 2r squared. So we have the area equals 2r squared times the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of 1 d theta plus the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of cosine 2 theta d theta. The integral of 1 respect to theta is theta. And then we have plus, and now we need to integrate cosine 2 theta, which again requires u substitution, where u is equal to 2 theta. So if u is equal to 2 theta, du is equal to 2 d theta, dividing both sides by 2, we have 1 half du equals d theta. So in terms of u, we can think of this as the integral of cosine u, then again, d theta is 1 half du. So the antiderivative is 1 half sine u, which is 1 half sine 2 theta. And now we need to find big F of b minus big F of a. When theta is equal to pi over 2, we have pi over 2 plus one half sine of two times pi over two is pi. And then minus, when theta is zero, we have zero plus one half sine two times zero is zero. Well, sine pi is equal to zero, so this is zero, this is zero, and sine zero is also zero. So this gives us the area is equal to two r squared times pi over two Simplifying 2 divided by 2 simplifies to 1, giving us the area equals pi r squared, which is the area of a circle, which does give us the area formula for a circle. The area of a circle is equal to pi r squared. I hope you found this helpful.